Welcome again, and now we'll learn a very particular tactic which is called the windmill. And this tactic consists on giving a discover check and giving regular checks at the same time. So when we studied discover attacks and discover checks, we said that in general discover checks can be more forcing. So here we have a discover check plus giving regular checks. So as you can imagine, this is very forcing. That's why this tactic can be particularly dangerous. Let's analyze some positions to see this tactic and to learn some ideas from it. In this position here, white is materially down, white has two minor pieces for a queen, although white has some pawns, materially speaking, black is doing fine. On the other hand, we see that here white can give a check with the move rook to g7, so white plays something forcing. The king cannot go to f8, that's why king to h8 is the only move. By the way, here after the move rook to g7, black resigned, black is a strong player, but in any case, let's analyze what could have happened. And here, first of all, we see that white can play a move like rook to e7, and black doesn't have anything better than going back to g8. At least white can repeat moves. So this is something also very psychological about the windmill, that if your opponent has a windmill, you are literally at your opponent's mercy, and you just have to wait, hope for a perpetual best. But here in this position, white can actually win a lot of material. Instead of moving the rook to e7, first of all, White might think about taking the pawn here, but black might try to escape this windmill. That's why here the simplest idea is to start grabbing material on the 7th rank by playing the move rook takes b7. Again, black only has king to g8. And now we give another check so that we place the king in a bad position where the bishop can attack it. So we see this idea that white doesn't have checkmate, but white has lots of checks to give. And this is just very annoying for black. And here we can take another pawn. So here we have a discovered check plus an attack on the rook, and here again black only has one move, king to g8, and here white can capture the rook, and after king to f7, in fact in this particular position we also have this very strong move, knight takes g5, and we have a knight fork, so basically white is just collecting all of black's pieces. Just notice here, and I want to mention that white has other strong moves, here after playing rook to g7 and king to h8, here white can also take on g5 because we have this fork or double threat, we attack the queen and we plan to give a checkmate with the move knight to f7, and if black tries to stop this idea, white can play knight to f7, black will have to give the queen for the knight, but here we may also use again a discover check and capture the queen, or we may also force this very nice checkmate with the move rook h7, so we give a double check, the knight is defending the rook, and after king to g8, we get this nice checkmate because the bishop and the knight control all the squares on the 7th rank. So, a common idea of the windmill is either to gain material or sometimes to give a perpetual check if we cannot progress any further, and last but not least, to give a checkmate. Let's take a look at this position. Here, white can create a windmill with the move knight to g6, and after king to h7, which is the only move, the knight can move pretty much anywhere, but here in fact we can even capture a rook first. And after the move king to h8, we have knight to g6, so we have at least perpetual. But here, thanks to the idea that we can give regular checks, white can maneuver the knight and bring it to f7 in order to give a checkmate. So after the move knight to e5, again the only move is king to h8, and then white gives a very nice checkmate with the knight on f7, so we see that both h8 and h7 are being controlled. And last, I want to clarify something that might be trivial. It is that the piece given the discovered check must have a clear road to give checks and must not be attacked. For example, in this position here, if white wants to give regular checks with the move rook takes f7 and then rook to g7, we see that this bishop is attacked with the knight, so black can simply capture the bishop. And in fact here, even if the knight wasn't attacking the bishop, Black might try to block the check with the move d4 or knight to e5. So here playing the move rook takes f7 to go for a windmill would be just a very bad idea. Also another idea here is to be a move like rook to g6 or any move with the rook on the g file in order to give a checkmate. But here again the bishop is being attacked and black can also block this diagonal with the move f6, even if the bishop couldn't be taken. So this would also be bad. So like any tactic we must double check in the specific position, if it's good or not. And in fact this is a very nice position because here white has another very brilliant move. Here white can play a double check, remember that these are very forcing, so here for sure we know that black has to move the king because it's a double check. Both pieces 
could be taken if they were given the check alone but here black has to move the king and then after the move rook to g1 we play this very similar idea that i spoke about and we get a checkmate so after the move queen to g5 rook takes g5 we have a checkmate so a windmill is just a specific case of a discovered check on which we can also give regular checks and this is a very forcing tactic therefore particularly dangerous